This is a continuation of the Viper DIS radio tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering the network settings and the DIS settings and we'll also see it run in a live DIS environment hosted by MACE. So you can see I've already started up two Vipers. The first Viper I have on Vox and it's transmitting on frequency 120. The second one is of course also receiving on frequency 120. I'm going to right click and go into the DIS settings and I'm going to do that for both Vipers so we can see them both operate at the same time. On Viper 1 you can see that we have the network settings and the local IP address is essentially just used when you have multiple network cards and if you, collect, uh, if you select uh, auto it will show you your current IP address. In addition there is a DIS port which must be the same on all the Viper entities um, in the uh, DIS environment. And the broadcast is where it's going to be sending its signal to. So if I set this broadcast IP address to uh, let's say 172, now the uh, DIS system will send to only an IP address of 172, 255 being a special number indicating that it's a broadcast. 172 means it's sending the message only to 172 IP. Since our local IP address on this machine is 173, I can change it to 173 and if we give it a second then you can see that it's once again receiving on uh, on this machine. But it will be receiving on this machine only unless I set it to 255. Now any machine on the local network will receive the broadcast from uh, this DIS radio. In addition to the network settings, we have the DIS entity settings. The primary importance here on the DIS entity settings are the site, app, and entity values. You can see they're both the same site, app, entity on both Vipers, as well as the DIS exercise is the same. The DIS exercise must be the same on all the Vipers and uh, entities that you wish to play in the same environment. If you set it to a different exercise number, they will act like they don't even see each other. In this case, uh, the site app entity is really indicating that it's really on one single platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change Viper 2 to be called entity number 2. And here we have own chip site app entity 1, we have own chip site app entity 2. And that doesn't mean a lot because we don't have anything in the environment to indicate that, hey, we have a position or we should calculate propagation of the signal. So all the signals come in at full strength, just as if they were on the same platform. I'm going to go ahead and select environment on both of them. And when I select environment on, uh, on this Viper 2, for example, that means any incoming signals will be attenuated by the distance from this platform to this platform. However, since we have not selected a platform that has a uh, real latitude and longitude, we have to set our own latitude and longitude manually down here. So I'm going to go ahead and set the latitude here to be, um, let's make it 30 north, and we'll make it 80 uh, west here and we'll set the altitude to be, oh, I don't know, 5,000 <clears> and we'll do the same thing here 30 north and we'll make it 80 west and we'll give the altitude also, oh, I don't know, 1200 okay so uh, I also need to make this west. Here's an important thing. Got to make it west. There we go. So now we have uh, now we're on the same latitude longitude. But if I were to change the longitude, make it 81 west, for example. Now you can see that the amplitude actually must have gone over the horizon. So let's put it at a higher altitude. Okay, there you go. So now we're at a higher altitude here at about 60 miles away and you can see that this uh, the amplitude here is significantly lower than it was before. If I turn off calculate propagation 
it goes back to full strength. So if you have calculation, calculate propagation on or you're wondering why you're not seeing any signals, you might want to go in and check that value, uh, especially if you have a latitude and longitude or the default coming up at 0, 0, you might not be near anyone. Of course, by the way, if, if we save these configurations, it saves all these values, including calculate propagation. So that's something you definitely want to check if for some reason you're not getting any signals. As well, of course, as your network settings, DIS entity settings, etc. All right, so that is the basics of the DIS settings and network settings. Now let's run this with a full DIS environment. That's going to be run by Mace, which has a SAF and uh, that's semi-automated forces, and uh, as well as an IAD simulation system. So I'm going to bring up Mace. And let's move the vipers out of the way. And I'm going to start uh, Mace with a very basic scenario just to illustrate what we're doing here. And in this scenario, we just have three platforms. And I'm going to tell it to go ahead and run. And you can see this platform already has a radio of some type on it, and it's broadcasting. And what we need to do is we need to select a platform uh, for these two. Uh, radios. In fact, actually, if you look at this, you'll notice that this radio is not picking up, or even this one, is not picking up uh, this broadcast because this uh, latitude longitude is so far away from the one we set in the DIS settings that, uh, that it can't see. It's over the horizon. So what I'm going to do is I could enter the site app entity value of one of these platforms and we would then become associated with that platform. So this radio would act as if it was right on board that particular platform. Uh, we could enter it manually or we could just do a pull down and I can pull it down and I can say EA6B2 and turn off the music. The music is coming from that uh, from that radio right there. And actually you can even see me as I speak uh, that we're broadcasting on frequency 120, you can see that that, uh, that blue circle there indicates that we're transmitting as well from this platform. Uh, so this was a simple way just to pull down, see the entity that you want to be associated with, and select it. And I'll do the same thing for the second Viper. So here we also have uh, a list and you can see that it shows that there are a number of entities found in the environment. Sometimes there's a great deal of entities out there and you don't want to have to sort through a giant list. So what you can do is you can eliminate some of the types of entities and then it'll only show you the entities that you're interested in. And in this case I'm going to take the A10 and again I'm going to lower the volume on the uh, on the default test music that's being sent out. And now if I change this frequency, enter new frequency, hit enter, and if I transmit, I'm now transmitting from the A10. You can see up here it says Viper 2 A10-3. Here we have A10-3 in MACE. And over here we have EA6B-2 and EA6B-2 as well. So uh, the entire system is working together and in fact it's even calculating propagation so that's why some of these uh, signals are lower than others in the environment. And that pretty much covers the basics of the DIS and network settings and We'll have more detail about other functions in other videos.